for stories you need to hear. The Life Beat Show. The Life Beat Show. It's Pulse 95. 95. World Radio Day. Yes, it is World Radio Day. We are celebrating here on uh, Pulse 95. And uh, somebody who I'm very excited to welcome into the studio is um, a legend, really, in the world of broadcasting uh, here in the UAE, Nasser Akram. Hello, Allah. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here with you guys. So good to have you with us uh, now, Nasr, because um, you have a, an extraordinary story, an amazing story. It's interesting uh, to kind of note before we do start that um, the very first radio station in the UAE, in fact, was here in Sharjah. That's right, yeah. I do recall. you remember it? Yeah, I recall uh, uh, as a listener, yeah, I was young and I used to listen to Al Sahel Oman. Yes, yeah, yes, there was um, uh, Sahel. Sahel. Yes, yeah. that uh, we had here, 1962, I believe it started, which is incredible to think uh, that we here, we are uh, Pulse 95, the first English radio station now as well. And you have a lot um, to talk about in terms of firsts too. You're somebody who has gone from a petrochemical engineering background right. into the newsroom. Right, that's true. <laughs> so yeah. tell us about that. Well, uh, as uh, I studied abroad and I had my bachelor's in manufacturing engineering and then I had my master's also. Uh, it was all in technical engineering and I joined the uh, Amoco Charger Oil Company in the early 80s. Uh, and I was uh, just like any oil and gas engineer, but... In reality, I had a kind of a keen interest and like a hobby in media, current affairs. And so from the beginning, I used to, uh, when I was, even when I was a child, I used to listen to radio a lot and read a lot. This was, these, this were, these were my interests and hobbies. Uh, when um, about 10 years after being uh, in oil and gas industry, uh, I was selected as a distinguished lecturer uh, by Society of Petroleum Engineers mm. based in Houston, Texas. And uh, I started uh, delivering uh, lectures, uh, and which was in about 12 countries in the Middle East, North Africa, and then later on U in UK and US as well. So that interest of delivering lectures, it kind of somehow kind of uh, increased that interest and I showed my uh, my interest and shared it with the uh, Dubai radio and TV. As, and in the early 90s, I started. Uh, and very interestingly, the very first time when I was in a studio, this was, as I said, about 10 years after being an engineer at the oil and gas company. Uh, when they did the uh, audio test, I uh, figured out that or I felt like, you know, hey, now, sir, this is the place you were born for. What are you doing in oil and gas industry? But, you know, that was that was all during the working hours. I was a petroleum engineer. You could feel it. You could yeah. feel that this is what you were made for. Yeah. And then none working hours. I was a, a media man. And then uh, from radio, uh, from FM, and then started into TV. And then uh, I joined also the Charger TV later on in mid-90s. And in Charger TV, they used to have a three language uh, programs for, for three hours each, English, French, and Urdu. So I had an opportunity uh, to read the English news in Charger TV as well. That was set, uh, Charger Satellite Channel. That's a, just a, a, amazing um, because, um, you know, what's interesting about that is uh, that, you know, you came in, this was all new. So for you, this was a first as well. Yeah, really. In fact, I, I missed to uh, share with you a very interesting story of uh, my love with the media. I started, as I said, when I was a child. And in late 60s, uh, when the first man landed on the moon, Neil Armstrong, uh, I recall very well, I was listening live on radio, uh, the, the whole journey of Apollo landing on the moon and Neil Armstrong putting his first steps yeah. on the moon. I yeah. recall that very, and that was very close uh, kind of milestone and uh, in getting 
connected and touched, uh, being touched uh, with the media. This is a, a really big moment that so many people remember. Um, and at that time, not everybody had TVs. No, no, not at all. There, you're right. Yeah. So yeah, this is a, this is something the radio, yeah. you experienced on the radio right. as well. Yeah, right. Uh, that's incredible. Um, we are going to take a listen um, to that moment um, when. Neil Armstrong landed on the moon. It is such a big moment in history, and that's what radio does. It connects us to each other around the world and connects us to those big moments, um, you know, it, it, which is why the, the theme is so great this year. It's dialogue, tolerance, and peace. Sure. Um, because it's really something that does encourage and help uh, dialogue and understanding, doesn't it? And sure. you, as somebody who has traveled the world, sure, you feel that, don't you? Yes, it- in fact, uh, right from the early days after I graduated from high school and uh, went abroad to study, um, living with people, uh, different different location, different culture, different language, different beliefs, I started figuring out that in spite of all the distances and all the uh, differences in the backgrounds, in reality, we are all human beings. And we need to learn to uh, work to uh, or live together, work together, and understand. In fact, it's a it's 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 a fact that there's so, so much interest because people come from different cultures. So you can exchange cultures. You learn from each other, different backgrounds, different uh, traditions, different food. So everything is just it could be considered and taken positively, and at the end, as I said, right from the beginning, we are human being, and uh, we. Uh, the way I look at it, uh, when uh, uh, after graduating after five years and working in an American company, Amoco Sharjah Oil Company, I feel like we are one one world, one family. That's the way it goes. We're going to uh, talk a bit more about your experience there and traveling the world. And uh, But now uh, let's take a listen to that moment back in 1969. On July 20th, 1969, man went to the moon. This was his ship of discovery, the lunar module Eagle. In it were two men, their names Armstrong and Aldrin two-thirds of the most fantastic team completed by Collins. Pathé News presents this historic film of the space age through a new process, Technicolor Vidtronics. As it happened, video signals were flashed over a quarter of a million miles of space for processing onto film. For stories you need to hear, The Life Beat Show. Show. It's Pulse 95. 95. World Radio Day. Welcome back to our show, Life Beat on Pulse 95. And yes, it is World Radio Day. And uh, we're celebrating by hearing the stories from uh, our team here and also some personalities who have really contributed to the media landscape in the UAE and in particular, Nasr Akram. He is uh, somebody who is um, an organizational expert. He is a petrochemical engineer, but also he was the first English newscaster here in the UAE as a, a national as well, uh, with some amazing stories to share there. Um, but Nasa, something that's uh, you know amazing about you is that yes, you traveled all over the world, and um, even working here in Sharjah with um, Amoco as well, Sharjah Amoco. Um, you talk about working with people from more than 20 different uh, cultural backgrounds. And what was that like? Well, uh, being in the U- U- UAE, uh, that's the uh, very common that we have hundreds, um, as in reality, 200 plus uh, nationalities living in harmony. Um, so Amoco being in Sharjah, we had... We heard about 20 plus uh, nationalities, backgrounds working together. Uh, Amoco being an international uh, American based company, one of the most important thing was the healthy working environment. We felt like we are like a one family. Together, we were just like members of a family working together. Uh, and in reality, I felt like uh, with my full respect to all the other working institutions 
all around being uh, government and private sector uh, amco had some little more human touch yeah that you know they were treating us like as um, human being more than employees Again, with the full respect, I'm sure that all the other companies do, but Amoco had some more extra miles on that sector. And as I said, we were working as uh, as one family. And interestingly, uh, we as employees, we had the feeling of when we coming back from the uh, our vacation, we were as happy as we are going to. to a vacation which was a bit little surprising when i shared <laughs> with my some other friends working in other locations but uh, really uh, there was such an interesting and healthy working environment uh, attracting that coming back to work was very happily very interesting that's something that's um is missing in a lot of companies don't you think now that you don't have that connection how do you think you built that connection between each other um at work in such a way that you loved to be there together well obviously uh, as i said uh, amoco was an international company they they existed about in 100 plus countries at that time uh, and uh it all comes uh from the top yeah uh when your top executives being uh, general managers ceos when they believe in a th- in 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 a, in an idea in a concept and they practice it they lead by example that's the way it goes whether it's a, as i said healthy work environment uh, whether it's a transparency safety all these concepts and aspects of uh, of of work of work or any job it got to be start for right from the top and it cascades all the way to all the yes. different se- segments and really uh, amoco really uh, succeeded in that they did a they did a great job with it Indeed. and and what about you know with your uh, lecturing around the world what was that like some of the stories that you can share from your encounters with people right. and probably you know at that time as well um it, it was probably rarer to see an emirati who was going out uh you know into the us for right. example right. and you know being an expert at your field as well I imagine not a lot of people would have heard of the United Arab Emirates at that point. Right. So you're taking back uh, taking me back to late 70s when I landed uh, in US as a Yes. young teenager student. <laughs> um in as you mentioned right uh, at that time uh, the UAE was about 6 uh, years 7 years old. Uh, not too many people heard about it. Uh, I mean the new generations i would say uh because there was no satellite channels even in fact at that time there were not cnn and all these so sharing uh uh information knowledge about our country that was a kind of kind of challenge but at the same time we were the ambassador of uae in uh, you know in us for example and uh, similarly learning from others how they live what the uh, their lifestyle so it was a really kind of experience of its its own k- uh, kind um and it was a very uh, uh enlightenment uh, eye opening eye opener and we really learn, learned a, a lot how people live in different parts of the world how they think and similarly as i said it's, it's vice versa so The, the the one 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 findings and conclusions was that you know we may live far from each other my 100 i mean tens uh, thousands of miles for east or west but at the end of the day we can live together in one place in harmony and uh, the the good ex- or the solid example is even in late 70s we had 100 plus nationalities right now probably 200 mm. but the thing is when i used to share that fact with our american friends they used to be surprised really you guys have all these nationalities living in harmony living everyone has his own place uh, uh, of uh, of uh, 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 practicing their own beliefs thoughts uh, 
they were really kind of very much admired that you know we want to really visit this place which is called UAE and uh, really learn a lot and more and more and obviously then then the media uh, started getting uh, more and more active and the satellite channels CNN and and all BBC and all the they become more and more active unfortunately there were some uh, period of time when things were ups and down but uh, uh, again we were the first people who really shared this inf- positive information. Exactly. So Nasser, you've done so many different things. Being a distinguished uh, lecturer as well um, for uh, for the SVE, uh, that was something, that was a big, big moment for you as well, traveling all over the world, traveling all over the Middle East as right. well. Right. Um, this goes to early 90s, uh, Society, of, Society of Petroleum Engineers, had a program called Distinguished Lang- Lecturer Program. Mm. And in the, to be uh, yeah, uh, selected for that program, you need to write a technical paper uh, of a, a pra- successful case study. And fortunately, I was uh, involved in a corrosion program at uh, Sharjah in Saja Field. I uh, wrote a t- uh, technical paper, sent it to Society of Petroleum Engineers in Houston and through the process this was uh, selected and approved I should say mm. and I was uh, selected as a distinguished lecturer program for the region Middle East North Africa so it was around 12 countries including a couple uh, GCC countries uh, India Pakistan Egypt and then f- a few Western African countries like Nigeria Angola Ivory Coast Congo Gabon these were some of wow. the countries, yeah. Real exploration. And, yeah. Yeah, and then for you. it was uh, re- later on, probably they found something good about in my speeches. So I, then I was uh, then UK and US was added to to the program. Um, again, it was um, not only uh, sharing technical knowledge to other countries. It was also uh, I was fortunate enough to be a member, or I should say, ambassador of UAE. In those places, I've been to some places where we're like um, uh, uh, in remote areas, uh, purely oil fields, but where all the engineers meet. So they held uh, uh, presentations or lectures or uh, SPE, Society of Petroleum Engineers meetings. So uh, it was a very good opportunity to share with them how what we do, technical side and also about about living in UAE and our about our about our culture and stuff like that. especially I've uh, been to a couple of remote areas in India and as far as the Western Africa I mean these countries at that time I'm talking about early 90s just barely the satellite channels were coming up but uh, they were not familiar with UAE mm. Sharjah mm. and our capital Dubai Sh- I mean Abu Dhabi and big major cities so it was a very interesting, and again, it was not on one-sided monologue, but it was a dialogue. Yeah. So it was a learning from them also how they What did they you live. learn? What did you learn from them? Again, you know, especially uh, visiting African countries, and the uh, it was a very learning experience that people are very much in desire for education. Yes. People would like love to learn uh, new uh, lifestyles because they were not you know, as, as as advanced as some other countries in the world. But it was a very good learning experience uh, and meeting uh, uh, Nigerians and meeting all, you know, all these uh, people, you know, they were, uh, they were happy that, you know, we took time and come and visit them and share with them our experiences. And similarly, for me, it was a good, interesting uh, period of time to learn about their lifestyle. It's just, uh, it's it's amazing when you have that exchange going on and the things that you learn and that you take back with you. But also something that uh, it, it inspired in you is that the whole love of volunteering. You're actually a, a board director of the Emirates Voluntary Association as well. This is a big thing for you. Right. Let's again... Uh there was an interest, of course, and along with, you know, during working with the oil company, uh, I used to be head of HSE, Health, Safety and Environment. Mm. And in that uh, safety and environment, there was a, a section 
of crisis management. Mm. Uh, so it just uh, kind of uh, uh, made me more and more interested in in case of any crisis. Could be like a minor, you know, heavy rains, floods. I mm. mean, this is kind of and how to support the society in these kind of uh, uh, unexpected events. So I just uh, figure out uh, how can I contribute and share and help others of my lens in oil and gas industry and how do you how do you uh, c- collaborate or how do you support work with the society and uh, there was a, a society for uh, or, uh, volunteers and I started uh, contact you know approach them and become a just a small uh, like a beginner member and then when they figured out that you really um bringing some not my personal no, i mean not nothing invented by me as a, but you know from the oil and gas industry amoco who are, who are leaders uh, in crisis management as well so i brought up that these ideas uh, and shared with them and we be, i became a solid member and later on i became a uh, board director of this society it was a long uh, period of time like about 8 plus years i was with them very active in in various activities meetings conferences within the uae and abroad similarly sharing with them the case studies uh, of some incidents happened in our facilities or even abroad i want to come back uh, in just a moment and ask you more about your volunteer work here in the uae why you think it's important for people to be volunteering their time and how they should be doing that and uh, the role of media and particularly radio in bringing people together helping people to understand uh, each other's issues what is important uh, for that so more to come on life beats on pulse 95 life beats life beats with Sally Musa only on pulse 95 95 world radio day It is World Radio Day. We are uh, talking all things uh, that connect us through the radio, through the media as well with a special guest Nasser Akram here in the studio. Um Nasser, something that you are known for. Um and it's interesting before you came on the show, a lot of different people uh, brought up your name to me and said, "Oh, you need to speak to Nasser because uh, he's an amazing man uh with such great stories of uh, of growing up here in Sharjah as well um and somebody who contributes so much to society uh, volunteer work is something that's very dear to your heart so i want to ask you um you know particularly as the theme uh today is all about uh tolerance and dialogue and peace and how important is volunteer work for you why do you think that we should all be giving of our time as well Well, it, when it comes to voluntary work, it's first of all, it's f- personal interest. I would say, really, uh, I feel like. Um, Where did that personal interest start for you, though? Like, did you have this thing growing up, or what was it? Yeah, I would say from from my readings when I used to read and see some experiences, some case studies, uh, and again, I give credit uh, a lot to also my. W- my i won't call it employer but my my second home amoco uh, really they they used to encourage a lot social responsibility mm. this concept in us and social responsibility is a lot to do with giving and it doesn't have to be only financial but it could be your time your knowledge your support that human touch and uh, interestingly you brought up a very interesting topic that uh, in our annual assessment which you call it ev- evaluation uh, so there were some points on your performance some uh, getting ge- getting getting uh, together w- uh, as a team member there were some points given in your s- uh, what do you call it what you where your your uh, contribution to the society what you give back to your society you go to charge a city for humanitarian uh, uh uh they call it charge city for humanitarian and uh, se- several other similar uh, uh, old people's home in charge 
all these places where you can go and give your time, your knowledge, and and as uh, as we we talked about the uh, the society for uh, for volunteers. So all these official bases are there. In fact, right now, I mean, for the last twenty five plus years, the thing is the personal interest of person giving taking time and giving to back to what uh, back, back to society everyone uh, the government or the country and the government has done great efforts to to educate us right from grade one all the way till the bachelor's and even higher degrees it's it's this is the least uh, our duty i should say that we should give back to the society to our country and uh, coming back to your question it's it starts yes starts from the person himself or herself of uh, giving and then there are sometimes good examples we have in UAE great as i said great platforms societies and we do have a great personalities a good example comes to my mind is sheikh abdul aziz and naimi the green the known as green sheikh he has done a great job i mean being a member of a royal family but he has given so much of his time his knowledge, his expertise within the UAE in dif- and abroad as well and in different different places. I imagine he hasn't left, he hasn't left youngsters, uh, mid-age, even old people. He, he approaches and he c- gets in touch with all different segments. Uh, probably you guys heard about uh, his initiative uh, Ramadan Aman. Mm. That was simply, it was for the safety of drivers who are approaching their homes half an hour before iftar time everybody is in rush and he has made some kind of whole ideas that just uh, boxes include you know all these for iftars dates and water and giving it giving to people who are rushing it's the simplest things it's right it's a very simple thing yeah yeah, yeah. even uh, the simplest ideas just that right. just giving of yourself giving of your time giving of your effort right and he has another initiative of uh, uh, receiving or welcoming uh, students uh, who come here for like uh, cultural and educational exchange. So there are about 20 to 30 students come he- uh, here three times to four times in a year mm-hmm. uh, from U.S. Um, those who are studying uh, like international relations, all these. So they come over here, spend a week in Sharjah, Ajman, in this region. And they, uh, they learn it, the, 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 the reality of how people live in UAE rather than what they hear in the media, all these ups and downs. And uh, again, he, he, I'm, I'm grateful to him. He has given me so many opportunity, opportunities and this is one of them to host two to three uh, students, American students, at my home, at my place and just live just the way I live. With, wow. Yeah. They come to your place. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's they live with you. With me, about three days. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You have to they, tell us, what is their reaction when they come to your home and they experience this oh, kind of an Emirati lifestyle? They don't want to go back home. <laughs> 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 I mean, they really love it. They say, hey, we can't believe it. You know, you guys, you know. And I and I tell them right from the beginning, no artificial or no, nothing uh, abnormal. This is the way I live. You will eat what I eat. We will go wherever I go with you and I won't take you to any other places special. Uh, you have all the time to go to shopping, to the build, the top buildings or to museums. I mean, that's, you know, I'll, I'll just show you how we live. Wow. Yeah. And they love it. They love it. They really love it. And they say that we can't believe it, you know, how and they feel that warmth of living, you know, in this part of the world, how close we are to our, you know, uh, I recall uh, once I've taken them to one of my old uh, relatives who is in his 65, 70s. And I spent a couple hours with them. And he and w- w- inter- interestingly, when we came out, the guy asked me, he said, Nasser, you guys, he's 70 plus. How come he's not on in old people's home? <laughs> I mean, he said, it's very common there, you know, in that part of the world. Right. So th- it's not, by the way, it's nothing right or wrong. No, right. this is just a kind of lifestyle. Uh, and we have, very much big duty in our uh, towards our seniors mm. and so the you know these kind of learnings 
that you don't learn it in, uh, you know, while you're with tour guides. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. And you don't learn it in right. a textbook. It doesn't, right. you need to see it, you need to feel it, you need to be part of it, which is incredible. Another, another voluntary inst- uh, interest uh, topic is uh, Sharjah Tatweer Forum. Yes. This was around in 2004. It's an idea of our great friend, uh, Hussein Al-Mahmoudi. Uh, he brought up this idea and uh, we group of uh, young, I won't call it youngsters, mid-age, uh, males, females, Emirati, Sharjans. They, we got together and uh, a Sharjah Tatweer Forum was established. It's mm. all about uh, developing young leaders uh, and, uh, in Sharjah for the near future. And that was another great voluntary uh, platform. You're that, involved in a lot more than that, but we're not going to talk about it because you are one of those people, and it n- needs to be said that you do a lot of voluntary work, but you you don't want to talk about it because we do live now in a culture where people do voluntary work and they usually record themselves even on video, but you don't even want to talk about it. So it, it, this needs to be said. You are a man who um, not only talks the talk, but you walk the walk and you do this every day. Yeah. And I know this because I have many different people, <laughs> just completely unrelated conversations that uh, have told me this about you. And I want to thank you so much, uh, Nasr Akram, for being with us here on the Life Beats on Pulse95 and uh, sharing your uh, amazing story um, with us here and happy Radio Day to you. Thank you very much. I really thank you for giving me this opportunity. It's my great uh, feeling to be with you guys. Do you know, it's a great pleasure and um, we can't wait to see what you do next. And uh, please let us be in on that. Let us be part of it uh, because it's wonderful. And uh, I'm so glad that we have people like you who have been part of our media landscape, who are part of our community every day giving of themselves and, uh, you know, changing, changing life, uh, establishing that dialogue, establishing exchange and peace and so much more. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. More to come on Life Beats in the next hour. We're going to be talking uh, about uh, young people in sleep. Should they be going to school at 10 a.m. so that they can... uh, Uh, experience more of a lion early in the morning. We're going to be getting an expert opinion on that and uh, we continue the Radio Day uh, theme where we will be hearing more from our colleagues here at Pulse 95. Life Beats Beats. with Sally Musa only on Pulse 95. 95.